Yes, hello. Uh, Hiroja Shive here, uh, talking to you about, well, my thought about altcoins. So, you hear this a lot about altcoins as being scams or not worth your money or time, or just they're just worth, you know, uh, trading to get Bitcoin. I hear this a lot from Bitcoin maximalists. And Bitcoin maximalists are individuals who firmly believe that it's uh, Bitcoin is the one and only uh, coin. You know, one coin to rule them all. And most of the other coins are either going to be um, fade away. Uh, the implementations that they have done within their coin, which is good for Bitcoin in the sense that they, these coins are experimental coins, that they, you know, testing out development, the ideas, like for example, um, proof of stake, uh, what is it, OTCs, which are the confidential transaction method that was uh, developed by Greg, Gregory Maxwell, ZSARCs, which is what uh, Zcash is doing to enhance privacy, Monero, uh, a little bit with Dash, with the, the marketing maybe, and the uh, maybe something that, about the nodes. I have some issues with Dash, and maybe I'll talk about that particular coin separately, my thoughts on that, but... Um, and Litecoin is like silver, you know, it implemented SegWit, it went through, it did well, so now Bitcoin can do it, people saw it, you know, testing, stuff like that. Um, at the same time, they're like, you know, all these coins could be using an off-chain method, could be chain linked together using um, atomic swapping, which allows for these coins to swap in between the two different chains and linking to Bitcoin, as a, basically these coins will be an added layer, if you will. And then there shows like you're just absolutely thinking that it's just silly to be in these other coins. They should not exist. They should not even be there. Everything, all that development and all that money should be into Bitcoin. And it's just, it's just dumb. It really is dumb because there should never be just one thing. If there's just one thing or one economic system or one economic platform, then that's a central point of attack, anyways. And all you're doing is just playing a game of musical chairs when it comes to enhances people's economic abilities. There should be multiple implementations of this concept of uh, blockchain or blockchain technology or Bitcoin. Um, I think at this point of almost nine years in that Bitcoin is more of a, a brand, if you will, uh, much like, for example, Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand. But if someone goes up to another person and says, hey, do you have any Kleenexes? They know what they're talking about. They know that you're looking for some you know, facial tissue to, for the nose or for whatever reason. Um, they're not going to go, oh, I, I don't know what you're referring to. I, I have, I don't know, breeze tissues. You know, I have tissues. I don't have Kleenex. I have breeze tissues. They're, people aren't confused by that. Um, there are certain brands that are so associated with something or a concept or something that people often refer to that brand. Uh, Xerox, when people used to copy things all the time, uh, go with Xerox something. Well, Xerox was the name of the company that first kind of implemented the copy machine. Um, you weren't going to be confused because you're using, um, I don't know, a Canon, a Canon copy machine. You weren't going to be confused by that concept. And also, just in general, because of the nature of Bitcoin and itself being an open and transparent system, um, open source, no one owns anything, um, the consensus rules and things of that nature, uh, you can't stop people from taking that concept and forking off just as we occurred with Bitcoin Cash or taking the concepts within Bitcoin and implementing a new coin as the case with Litecoin uh, which is basically a Bitcoin coin a uh, clone if you will as it's referred to or seeing some of the flaws that are within Bitcoin because of the development and things of that nature like the malleability attack uh, with Dash with not addressing or incentivizing people to run nodes uh, with Zcash and Ethereum addressing the issue of um, ASIC mining, there's other coins that do that as well. I think it's like Pure Coin and a few other coins uh, that do that. Uh, there's certain things that allow for more decentralization, allows for more people to on ramp into the cryptocurrency space and participate. Uh, what other information people? Oh, there's more coins in existence. Uh, Dogecoin, for example, is not a deflationary. A coin it actually allows for allocation of coins uh, per year um, there's not going to be a set amount so that's Dogecoin's way of addressing uh, the having issue to incentivize miners knowing that there will be uh, there will always be coins to mine if you will but at a certain almost fixed rate to the to the existence of Dogecoin 
So it allows for, I guess you can say, built-in inflation within Dogecoin, uh, which allows it for it to be a very effective, efficient mining coin, if you will. Um, we'll talk about a little do bit about Dogecoin a little bit later. Uh, but basically, I, my opinion of altcoins is this, is that they shouldn't be considered altcoins. It just be, should be called cryptocurrency. That's what it is. That's what they are. Um, just like there's not one type of shoe or television or something like that, there's not going to be one type of coin, even if it's the best type of coin ever. Like, for example, um, Mercedes-Benz or BMWs are considered very, very effective, very highly efficient vehicles. So some of the safest vehicles are like Volkswagen, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz up there. But people still buy Toyotas, Fords, Chryslers, Dodge, uh, Teslas, if you will. Uh, because it doesn't fit their particular need. You know, BMW and Mercedes-Benz for the longest time didn't were in the SUV game. They're basically sedans and sports cars. They do have a few now, but it was a very long time. And even then, they're more like luxury SUVs and not work vehicles, which is where you find in the Ford and Dodge uh, type of vehicles. And, and Toyota finally got into the, really got into the really good um, making of utility vehicles for the purpose of people, you know, starting their own business, maybe they're a cleaning company, maybe they're in construction, maybe they um, do, you know, some kind of yard work, or they're in the tech industry, or they, you know, you see um, a lot of times uh, smaller vehicles for government stuff, like forensics, um, if you've ever seen it, unfortunately seen a crime scene or something like that, they're not like these big ass vans, they're like these, uh, you know, uh, F-150 type trucks with these beds in the back that allow them to pull out their, their, their equipment. And so it's more effective, more efficient. It's right there. They're having these big gas guzzling vans. There's extra space they don't need. Everything's in the back of the truck, if you will. So that type of stuff. And so some of these coins do some form of utility for people, like Monero and Zcash are privacy-based coins. Maybe eventually Bitcoin will, uh, through a soft fork, but I've seen indications it might have to be in a hard fork, allow for privacy. Um, but as adoption grows and more people uh, participate in the system, there could be um, some regulatory hurdles, particularly with the fact right now with exchanges being so centralized and you have to use AML, KYC in order to obtain cryptocurrency um, as far as buying. Now, if you already have it and you want to switch and use Shapeshift or Changely or any other type of system that's like that that's coming out in development and switching between coins, you don't have to do AML, KYC, but in order to get that initial coin, unless you're selling something, um, some type of service or someone tips it or gives it to you, you have to give your government information and those coins are associated with you initially before you either purchase, buy, or change out, or shift your coins around, um, which you will. And that's a hurdle for a lot of people. Not everyone has access to identification, particularly globally. Uh, not everyone wants to put that their information out like that association and has nothing to do with hiding or evading taxes or like that They're very concerned about their privacy. They don't want their there's so much of their data already out there They, they want to limit and control which is the purpose of cryptocurrency their economic information out there in the world in the space and have some say and some privacy and some say of what information about themselves is out there so those, those type of hurdles where, you know, you might not have Coinbase that says that if you utilize the um, confidentially function within Bitcoin, that they might not accept your coin or they might close down your account. Or these exchanges won't sell that particular version of Bitcoin. Because now there's two versions out there. There's Bitcoin Cash and then there's the legacy Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core, if you will. And we already talked about how Bitcoin Core is seeking to f build up an implementation to fork if uh, the SegWit, uh, the 2x portion of SegWit were to occur. So there's that, and there's also the fact that some of these exchanges don't accept all the different types of coins. Like for example, right now it's just Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin um, being traded and sold on Coinbase. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is there. Eventually, January, those coins will be released. But at this point in time, it's not um, traded there, and so you don't see Dash, you don't see um, ETC um, traded on Coinbase. Um, at the same time, I think Gemini does trade uh, both Ethereum and ETC, but they do it a little bit differently than Coinbase. BitPay is a exchange, Poloniex, Kraken, all these other exchanges out there, but some of them have to start cracking down and doing AML and KYC, particularly depending on where they're located. And given what has happened with BTCE, 
where there's not those type of um, regulations and the fact they were taken down pretty damn hard. Yes, there was a hacking issue with that, but with BTCE, uh, they, they traded a lot of different uh, altcoins and, crazy, and currency coins. Uh, the point, of, point I'm saying is that a lot of these coins can function in a way that allows for people to not only get into the cryptocurrency space, uh, fit their particular needs. Maybe they need, they're they very concerned about privacy and they wanted to obfuscate their transactions because they don't want people to, because of blockchain spies on um, the you know, Bitcoin chain, blockchain, they don't want people to know the type of buys and purchases they're doing because maybe for investment purposes, they're trying to build up their company to launch a new product. And if that data is out there and people can track it down, they can kind of guess or ascertain what type of pivot or move and, then, and their rivals might counter counter on um, them or get ahead of them or uh, take that piece of property that they were seeking to buy. Um, another thing also is, you know, the, the reason why Bitcoin worked in the first place is people wanted to utilize Bitcoin for digital cash purposes. And there are coins out there that emphasize that. Dash is one of them. Um, some shit Litecoin is saying that they're, um, you know, small buy purchases, uh, just purchase small buys. Uh, there's a few other coins out there that emphasize the fact that their purpose is, is to be the internet and money. They're not looking to be a bear bond or a savings account or even an investment account like Ethereum where you're, you're using it for ICOs or anything like that. It's just for purchasing goods and services and they're marketing themselves to be that and building their functions out for that purpose. And so there there is a need for that. Um, Dogecoin. I, I like to tell people with Dogecoin, it's, it's like... When was the first time you ever encountered money? I remember as a child, I was very, very young. I'm a very, very visual person, so there's certain memories I remember. And I was like two or three years old, I remember picking up pennies off the ground and just picking them up and picking them up because I knew what that was. I've seen my mother and father pay for things in the grocery store with cash when cash was still a very vibrant everyday daily activity everyone was using cash very few people were uh, swiping the cards even then when I was a child um, most either writing checks or you paying in cash so you had to like literally go to the bank pull some money out for that day or for the week and that was the cash you held because people weren't very comfortable with utilizing the debit or credit cards and even in places that you frequently utilize like grocery stores still didn't have the machines place and even if they had the digital machines what they would do is they would do credit, so they would do this thing where they carve and copy and swipe your card, especially restaurants for like American Express and the credit card master and Visa card, they would like carve and copy. I personally have done this, I used to uh, do some transactions from traveling um, back in the early aughts where that was still a thing, like when the machine went down, we would bust out the carbon copy and just and then seven to eight days later, you know, that stuff gets processed or 14 days, it, it still took a while uh, for that to be processed, but it was it was done and so that was a, a method of payment and now things have changed everything's digital you do stuff with your phone you do something like a little key card just boop 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 everything's beep boop 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 boops and ones and zeros and we'll talk about that on both the word of a metaverse and, and using the shives about the war on cash but the, but the point is I was a very small child I was picking up these pennies and gathering these pennies because I wanted I remember I wanted two two rolls and Tootsie Rolls were like five cents for just a Tootsie Roll. So I knew if I had five pennies, I could get a Tootsie Roll. And I just remember just always grabbing and collecting them and stuff like that. I also done some weird stuff where, because I, I had younger siblings, like, let's put pennies in our mouth, let's put pennies in our nose, let's put pennies in, you know, um, in the wall socket, because we're scientists and we're going to do an experiment about electricity. Very weird child. Anyways, um... My sister still hasn't forgiven me about because I didn't pennies up her nose because her nose to this day still has issues. Um, but anyways, um, I remember getting a piggy bank and putting pennies in the piggy bank so I can save money and build up to getting, you know, candies and little toys. I still remember as I got older and I had different types of penny banks of having one of those big water jugs and as a collective of all my siblings, we would put as much pennies that uh, either we earned through... Uh, babysitting or allowance or just finding or being given you know some change and putting it in at the end of the year rolling that all up and um, getting some Christmas presents and getting some you know different things for ourselves um, there's a couple times we actually had to pay rent using that change big old ch jug change but there's initial reaction where you know initial that initial 
point of receiving money. And it's not bare bonds, it's not a savings account, it's not a check, it's that little, you know, pennies and nickels and dimes, whether because of here in the States we have the tradition of putting uh, change under, you, you know, you lose a tooth, you put, your, you know, you put your, a tooth under your, your pillow and the tooth fairy will come and you'll get like either a silver dollar or a 50 cent piece or a couple quarters or some change per tooth. Now some kids got very um, entrepreneurial and start yanking teeth out. That doesn't quite work. Gets you in trouble. And it's very painful. Um, but, you know, these are the things that people, you know, kids would do to, to get that change, that initial amount of change. And that was like kind of entry into the monetary system because it's physical, it's visible, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. And because it's such a small amount and what you're getting is more of a, an emotional reward like with the like toys or candy like those paper airplanes were a big deal when I was a kid. Uh, little army guys, um, coloring stuff, uh, Barbies, you know, Barbies were like three or four dollars so it wasn't that very difficult to, you know, save and get a Barbie. Uh, toys like that, you'll be able to you know, purchase them and you'll be able to have it in your hand as a result of just this a little amount. And so you figure it out, do I want to get candy or do I want to get that Barbie I've been looking, eyeing for and have to wait like a week or a month or a while as I fill up my little He-Man um, uh, banking uh, piggy bank. And I think Dogecoin is a great way for entry for people into the cryptocurrencies because it fits in that, mechanism, that kind of mechanism, that kind of socialization that some of us that uh, are in this space um, receive by receiving that you know, initial amount of money, that, that piggy bank that they had and learning about you know, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, or depending on where you are in the world when you have that physical amount of cash and put it, placing it somewhere and holding it and learning from that as a child and learning what you can and can't buy, what you can and can't purchase, and learning to figure out taxes on some stuff. Um, when I was younger, um, candies and stuff weren't necessary tax, but some places they were. Um, and if you didn't factor that in, like, you couldn't get a soda because you didn't figure out SRV plus tax. So you see the thing, you're thinking, oh, 99 cents or 50 cents. Oh, but it's 50 cents plus SCRV plus tax. So it puts it at around like I think it was like 56 or 60 cents for the whole whole deal. So figuring things out like that, it might have been 65 cents because cans are 10 cents, so 60, I think it might have been like 67 cents, 65 cents at a time. Stuff like that when you go to, you know, the grocery store. And so you have to, that's a, you know, a little bit of lesson you learn about the tax man. Uh, things of that nature. So I think coins like that, Doge coins like that, it allows for people to have a small amount of monetary value change your will, placing it in like a nice little piggy bank, seeing the value grow up and down a little bit. Uh, Dogecoin is not that too significant amount of growth, but allows for people to play with it, place it in a wallet, learn how to put it in a core wallet, learn what, you know, the blockchain is, learn what, um, you know, should you invest in something, should you tip somebody, should you purchase something, what do you want to purchase with? Um, switching out from Dogecoin to you know other types of currencies, mining. You can still pretty much mine. It's, some of it's merge mining. I think there might have been a bit of a switch. It might have gotten back. I haven't quite seen the data on it, and I'll look up, I'll look that information up because Litecoin and Dogecoin are merge mine. There's certain coins that teamed up to each other so that when you mine, you know Litecoin, you also get Dogecoin as well. Um, so that has helped strengthen uh, the Dogecoin mining hashing power, if you will. Um, node operations you know running a node um, but dogecoin is also known for charitable giving it's the coin that does these charitable acts and i have a link in the show notes of the continuing charitable acts that dogecoin has done from um, giving socks to homeless people um, meals things of that nature um, things in the past but there's still stuff going on within the space um, our millionaire our millionaire maker um, is this subreddit where they you know they try to convince as many people to give to a person who's randomly selected, gives a comment, is voted high enough, it goes into a nice little lottery pool, that person is you know randomly selected, and then you give either through PayPal, Google Pay, Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, um, you know, a dollar's worth, uh, given to them to um, try to, you know, if a million Redditors were to give one person a million dollars, it would be a millionaire. Um, 
and typically it's around the $1,500 amount is with as much money that most of these people raise. There's been a few that have gone much higher depending on their story and their need and the period of time. Typically September through December because of the holidays people are more giving. But the point of what I'm trying to emphasize is that there's a function there. Dogecoin is known to be charitable. Dogecoin is known as a community that if you come within it, that people are willing to educate you and show you all the different businesses, places um, to participate and engage with, um, how to earn Dogecoin, how to uh, spend Dogecoin, how to mine Dogecoin, uh, what different wallets you utilize. Um, the mobile wallet game has kind of changed a little bit for Dogecoin, but it's mostly like, I would say desktop and um, hardware wallets. There's a Dogecoin function on one of the, the ledger wallets, treasure ledger wallets, you can hold Dogecoin on. Um, and you, know, you can still do the traditional stuff like paper wallets and stuff like that. But the point I wanted to emphasize is the old coins, you know, as they're emphasized, and I, I'm gonna start referring to them as cryptocurrency coins, um, crypto coins, if you will, and stop because all is alternative to Bitcoin. And it was starting as a very disparaging thing. And so I want to distance, it, distance the meaning of these coins as disparaging because they do have a function. And even if some of the implementations of different coins or uh, functions, if you will, like smart contracts that are on Ethereum, were implemented on the Bitcoin or one of the versions of the Bitcoin, it doesn't, I don't think it still is going to diminish the value of the other one. It's not going to go away. It's not going to leave. For example, Litecoin has Segwit. Litecoin hasn't gone away. Um, Litecoin hasn't diminished or changed or anything like that. It's actually gained some value and it's gained its place within the cryptocurrency space because if you look at it, if you want to own a whole Bitcoin, you have to pop down almost $3,400. To own a whole Litecoin is 50 bucks, and then you can hold it if you want to and that increases its value or you can utilize it for the function that um, many people wanted when it comes to cryptocurrency and they're not necessarily interested in trading is you know I'll hold some for saving but I want to spend for things on the internet and not have people being aware of every single little tiny type of transaction I don't want to have permission to spend yes there's blockchain spying and things of that nature and if a particular business has your address I suppose you know all that information could necessarily leak uh, but for the most part the data the data linkage is very, very small and can still be kind of a little bit obfuscated depending on what it is you do. Like if you have a PO box under a different name, you know, it depends on your level of paranoia and security or SEOs that you want to, it's not SEOs, offset, offset, I think is the word that you want to utilize. Um, there's not that significant direct link which you get with credit cards and you have people getting their accounts drained, um, mortgages taken out in their name, cars taken out in their name. All sorts of kind of like weird stuff that can happen and ruin people's lives is not necessarily you're gonna have with a cryptocurrency purchase. Now people can still get scammed, um, they can get hacked either through mobile or desktop. Um, they can have a fire. I saw a news story where a guy had a fire at his home and both his backups were in the same location and he lost almost fifty thousand dollars of cryptocurrency or some large amount like that. You know, that completely sucks. Uh, that's why your backups should probably be, you know, offline somewhere else, not in a singular location. But, you know, things of that nature, there's not such a, a linkage, if you will. Um, and I also want to say with altcoins, so. Altcoins have a function, you know, they fit in needs, and even if it's a niche, niche need, um, there's all sorts of niche and boutique things out there um, in existence in the world. And cryptocurrency, not only is it a currency if you will and a bear bond or savings or an economic value but it's also a product it is it's all these things and it can be all these things and fit all these needs for different people depending on how you want to utilize it individually for yourself and so like there's just not one type of shoe like there's nike reebok um, sketchers uh, converse dockers uh, red wing you know depending on fitting your need and style that you want, um, even type of feet you have. I mean, you know, some people have really big feet. They can't wear certain types of shoes, um, flat-footed, things of that nature. Uh, dress shoes. You know, Reebok doesn't make dress shoes. They're pretty much known for sneakers. So there's certain types of functionalities that you know the, these cryptocurrencies do in this space, and they they have value. And some of them have a stronger utility than right now than Bitcoin, particularly Ethereum right now as a um, ICO or crowd funding platform for various different 
um, products and companies out there. Now, it is a bit of a bubble, and there are some issues about it, and I guess we'll talk about that in reason to try with the podcast, but that's its utility. Right now, Bitcoin very early in the space did have that functionality. People just kind of did it. Uh, there's different companies that, um, particularly in the, in the gambling sites, they um, had done that just on their own, where you know if you gave them X amount of Bitcoin, they would give a return investment to use those Bitcoins as um, the house, the house um, bundle or the house um, money for the gambling site, and people got investments on that. There's a few other companies that you know started out by raising funds through Bitcoin, but Ethereum has pretty much been proven right now to be the most effective means of raising um, capital for your for your business. Now transitioning that capital into something that people can utilize is completely different and the different ICOs out there there's a, there's a bit of a mess but that is its utility. Uh, again Monero and, and Zcash are privacy coins. Monero has a I think a better, better stronger coin for that. Dash has been effective means of marketing itself as being the digital payment platform is seeking to widen what um, services are out there uh, for people to pay with Dash. Um, that I've seen that climbing up and increasing. Not only that, but it's different assets and functionality within its community, even though I have some issues with it, like the master nodes and nodes and, and different uh, placements in it and how it got started. Um, people can participate at uh, different levels and have some kind of monetary gain depending on what level they want to participate. But kind of getting back to Dogecoin, my one of my favorite coins and the coin I do hold, um, again it, it just kind of goes back to kind of the basics. People have to learn at a certain pace and a certain level and I think people forget when it comes to Bitcoin that people don't really want to fractionally own something. That's what's in the stock industry. That's what the stocks are already, or even property or businesses. People are fractionally owning stuff. Nobody wants to f own a part of something. They want to own the whole enchilada. And at the price point that Bitcoin is right now, there's a lot of people that are not going to be able to attain the ability to own the whole Bitcoin. Uh, simply for the fact that um, either A, they haven't been born yet, um, B, they were too young to get involved, C, they, they didn't know about it. Um, D, they just didn't really have the necessary capital in the very beginning to get in early enough, depending on when you know they learn about it. If they learn about it now, it's, it's price point out of a lot of people's, people's places. So being able to get into a coin that they can get into, be involved in, support, and build doing their economic wealth, but not only that, but it's a coin that um, functions as a strong reputation, but able to shift or change or build value off of, I think is very important. I think people miss that, the fact that people have different economic levels, different economic needs, and being able to get into this space on ramp at a lower threshold than what's currently at the point with Bitcoin is essential. And we'll, I'll talk about it at a different time about about how people's thinking about Bitcoin in itself, particularly with trading and stuff like that, that we're slowly getting into this weird space of musical chairs, um, which is a concept where, it's a political concept where basically nothing's changing. All you're doing is you're just switching out people and the system basically remains the same. And it seems like there's certain aspects of the Bitcoin community and the economic community where we're just playing a game of musical chairs and all we're doing is basically rebuilding the same system that people are trying to flee. Um, but that's it. I just think that all uh, cryptocurrencies uh, that are not Bitcoin should be given a, a stronger chance, a stronger emphasis, um, more support, development. A lot of them do have development, but stronger development. And not being so disparaging to it because even if some of the functionalities are developed in these different cryptocurrencies that are, that are Bitcoin does eventually get into Bitcoin it doesn't mean that it's a waste of time or waste of resources or that coins just simply disappear I think the whole emphasis of the one 
one Bitcoin to roll them all or one coin to roll them all is very detrimental to the community and the growth of the community because it puts people off. Uh, it really does. It, it puts people off to say, well, the only way I can get into this space and I have all these gains of wealth is I have to do a buy-in of, of like $3,500. That's a lot of money. Oh, but I can do $50 and somehow my $50 is just going to grow eventually. That's not quite the promise of economic self, you know, self value that um, was promised initially with this community. Um, again, this might be just a marketing issue that Bitcoin has, and it's not expressing or explaining itself or articulating itself well enough um, to the larger masses. Um, well, I guess we'll talk about that at a different time as well. But I just, you know, cryptocurrencies, it, they're important, um, they're essential to the growth uh, globally of this economic platform. All of them have a function and utility and we just have to really change our way of thinking and going beyond just its trade value or its ability to go up in value and have to really, I think, really focus on utility. Does this coin perform the function it's supposed to do? Um, and does Bitcoin do it better or does the other coin do it better? Does this coin actually do it better for people? And maybe we need to emphasize on that a little bit more. So that's it. That's my thoughts. It's a bit, bit of a long one. Um, thank you very much for listening and to the moon.